For many young athletes, being injured has become a part of everyday life. Head trauma is the number one injury in football. Each year, cheerleading moves are getting riskier, and baseball, softball, and soccer players are taking conditioning to the extreme. Athletes are often told that they are simply overdoing it and the best thing to do is rest. But a lot of dedicated athletes will stop at nothing to be on top. I think that um, it's important for the kids to have a certain amount of drive to push themselves to be successful. If they don't push themselves a little bit, then they're not going to be the best that they can possibly be. The drive to be the best has its price. Severe injuries that used to be limited to professional sports players are now showing up in young athletes. I was playing soccer and I was going towards the goal and a girl slide tackled me and I broke my arm. I was at cheerleading and I did a back handspring and I sprained my thumb. I jumped up in the air to get, um, to get an interception. I came down and I twisted my ankle and broke this tendon in the side of my foot. I was going after the soccer ball and I stepped the wrong way and a ligament popped off of my heel and when it popped off it brought a chip in my bone with it. I've been injured with a black eye. I was hit with a hockey stick and I've been injured with a fat lip. 3.5 million teens are injured yearly, but a few injury prevention tips can help keep everyone in the game. Wear the proper equipment for the sport and make sure everything fits properly. My son's a goalie uh, for a hockey team, so it takes him about 30 to 45 minutes to actually put the gear on. And myself and the coach goes through and looks at the straps and makes sure that all of the gear is set and where it's supposed to be before he even enters the rink. Know the rules of the game thoroughly and follow them. They are there to promote safety. Stay out of the sport when you are injured. Warm up first. If your muscles aren't properly prepared, they will be injured more easily. Kids don't realize the importance of, of actually performing an actual stretching program prior to their, their sport starting event, um, as well as a warm up and a cool down. Playing it safe is the best way to prevent an injury. However, if you do find yourself injured, Take the time and let your injury heal. Listen to your body before you take the field. Just think, what would you rather have longer, an injury or a trophy? Maggie Roberts, TSC News. The Lakeland Silver Moon Drive-In was opened April 14, 1948, a full 15 years after Richard Hollings had opened the first drive-in theater. His idea was to take the convenience of the drive-in restaurant and expand it to include the silver screen. The height of the drive-in's popularity was from 1948 to 1954, when their numbers grew from 820 to 3,775 theaters. In 1996, Harold Spears purchased the Silver Moon as well as the Joyland Theater in Date City. I enjoy entertaining customers, and I enjoy motion pictures myself. I've kind of been, been around it all my life, and uh, I enjoy the... Uh, entertainment business. The movies have always been a great place to escape reality. Drive-ins make the experience even better and transport the viewer back to a simpler time. Uh, I just like the drive-in because it's got really good prices and um, it show really good movies here. I like coming to the drive-in. It's a better atmosphere. It's more family oriented. The seats aren't hard, squishy. You're relaxed. You're comfortable. You can enjoy the movie. It's a lot better than going to a movie theater. I like that you get service and everything, and when you go watch the movie, like nobody bothers you, nobody, there's nobody back in back of you just throwing popcorn or doing anything. You get to watch in your own car, and you be with your own friends or family. The Silver Moon Drive-In has a double feature seven nights a week. The cost is $4, and children under nine get in free. For more information, you can visit silvermoondrivein.com. Or to learn more about drive-ins in general, visit driveins.com. Zach Phillips, TSC News. The Lakeland Square Mall's 8th Annual Back Your School Teen Event gave teens a chance to win cool prizes and experience the scene of fashion shows, makeup, and the newest gadgets. Multiple stands were set up displaying internet safety tips, the latest technology, and the hottest fashions and trends. The scene event is our back to school event that we host every year and when we started this event three years ago it was much smaller um, and over the years with the popularity of the event and a lot of the people who want to participate it's grown tremendously and we have um, 10 participants this year and with a lot of prizes and a lot of giveaways and a lot of excitement. We expect over 1,500 kids to be here today. I like most about the scene is the cool prizes. I came to the scene to see the fashion show and that me and my sister thought it would be cool to get makeovers. We came to the scene today to spin the wheels and see the fashion show. I liked most about it is um, the spin the wheels. It was fun. I came because uh, we can get makeover tips on how to do our makeup. 
Well, the hottest trends for makeup this season is definitely the pink and purples are back in style. Um, we're actually seeing a lot of deep pinks and a lot of dark purples. Um, lipstick is really going out the window though and glosses are coming back in style. Make sure that you have a great liner to match your lip gloss and make sure that you have the blush to finish it all off. The most popular every year is our Pepsi uh, prize wheel where students and kids and families can purchase a Pepsi in the mall vending machine and spin the prize wheel for lots of prizes. And this year we have gift cards from a lot of the retailers and from the mall that are on there. And those are always our biggest items. We've had over 20 kids in line most of the time all, all uh, event. The scene gave teens from around Polk County a chance to see what's hot and what's not. Maggie Roberts, TSC News. Attorney General Bill McCollum came to our school on Monday. He was here to talk to students about internet safety. He's hoping to provide teens with an online safety program. He's hoping to teach middle and high school students different ways to protect themselves from being mistreated on the internet, as well as how to protect them from child predators. I have three boys and two grandchildren, and I learned during the time I was running for Attorney General how much activity there is on the internet and how dangerous it is. 77 million kids go on the internet every day, one out of every seven will be solicited for sex. It could be closer to one out of every five in my experience in Florida schools. That's a tremendous number. There are dangerous people out there that want to prey on our kids at all age levels. And we need children to understand better about what those dangers are and how to protect yourself. I want them to understand that the Attorney General and the Sheriff of Polk County and all of our deputies and assistants are there to keep the kids safe. We want to keep them safe from predators. We want to keep them safe from people who would take advantage of them on the internet. Anything you post, anywhere you post it, MySpace or otherwise, you got to expect somebody to be able to see it. So there's no real secrets on MySpace. In fact, there are no real secrets on the internet, which comes as a shock to a lot of kids. And when you put something up there, just be sure it's something you don't mind the whole world knowing about in case somebody does see it you don't expect. He wants to keep teens safe by showing them how to use the internet in a safe way. Maggie Roberts, TSE News. Mrs. Cooper's sixth grade science classes recently took a tour of our universe to learn about the conditions and environments of other planets. The Alien Project is one that all my students love and I assigned it because I like to do hands-on activities with them because I feel like it brings what we're learning in science to life. It was fun picking all the pieces and building my alien. Book works boring and if you do fun stuff it kind of sticks in your head. I've learned lots of things about Mars. It may be able to support Life, it has some traces of water and has two moons, Deimos and Phobos. Hands-on projects is better than doing book work because when you do hands-on projects, you have lots of fun. I think my students did a wonderful job. I have a lot of creative, intelligent young ladies and gentlemen in my room, and they were uh, really able to take this project and bring it to life. Mrs. Cooper's students enjoyed using their creativity to help them learn about the planets in our solar system. These hands-on activities help the students retain important information instead of just reading about the planets in a book. Amanda Olander, TSC News. Walking through the halls, you never imagine what's going on in someone's life or what they've been through. So just imagine being born at 23 weeks, being blind in one eye, and having many disabilities. This is what life is like for our very own April Fisher. Some of the struggles that I've been through, um, I was in the hospital for eight months, then I, um, and I've also had a weak eye, and um, I also had throat surgery on my voice, but my voice is okay now. April is blind in her right eye, and the first eight months of her life was spent in a hospital because she was born so small and so early when she was born, she weighed only one pound and five ounces. She's had a lot of challenges because they gave her a 1% chance of living. Um, she had some different um, brain bleeds and different things that, that challenged her um, early on, but she was able to finally get well enough to go to foster care. It's cool and she gets her work done and she's friends with everybody else in the portable. I think April's best characteristic is resilience. She can she can bounce back from anything. April's definitely a positive influence on the rest of the class because she leads by, she's very good at showing you that it doesn't matter what's slowing you down, that you can still go forward. 
and get what you want. April does a great job with her enthusiasm. She's always willing to work and she always meets the challenge. She does a great job and she's fun to have in class. Teaching April, I know that she's gonna give her best effort no matter what and even if it's hard for her, she's gonna give a great effort and that's what it's all about. I stay positive by listening to music and listening to Allie and AJ. Even though there was no hope for her when she was born, April Fisher is living proof that you can always beat the odds. Daniel Gallipo, TSE News. Hey LG, I'm Lala with today's top story, 70s flashback. I'm gonna find out what were the it's of the 70s. I got a chance to talk to one of the counselors, Mrs. McGriff. So let's open the door and find out more. Who was everyone's idol? The Jackson Fives with Michael Jackson. What was the coolest hairstyle? The Afro. Just like ours. What was your favorite song? There's so many, but one that comes to mind is Michael Jackson and the Jackson Fives ABCs, one, two, threes. Did you ever get to experience a uh, disco? Yes. I used to love uh, disco dancing, and one of the dances we did was called the Watergate. Can you do it for us? <laughs> That was awesome. Let's get funky with the Jackson Fives. Peace out. Friends and loved ones are still grieving over the loss of Carly and Alex Burbank. A little over a year ago, the family five's lives were turned upside down in a tragic accident. Our family suffered a tragedy about a year ago where our hearts were broken. Um, we lost our two children. He lost his brother and sister. Um, but the Lord has been there for us um, from the beginning. Um, um, after our vehicle quit rolling, um, I had many, many people rushing over to the car and I asked them to please be quiet and start praying. And the gentleman holding my hand said, that's good because I'm a pastor. Friends continue to visit the burial site and are still posting comments and messages on Alex's MySpace page. Soon at our church, we're going to have a family life center and they have decided to name that after Alex and Carly, which they would be so tickled to know about because this is going to be such an amazing uh, place for the whole community, not just our church, but the community. And I'm hoping that it will bring um, more people closer to our Lord. I would have to say that the Lord has been there the most for us. He has, uh, has made a really hard thing a little bit easier for us in, in many, many ways. How do you think that Burbanks have dealt with the situation? Rather well. I think it's good that they get up every morning and they never give up. How have they inspired you? They've inspired me by helping my friends get through the situation since I lost one of my best friends. It's kind of hard, but they inspired me to keep going and to never give up. How do you think the Burbanks have dealt with the situation? I think they dealt with the situation real well considering that they've lost two of their children and they still get up every morning with a smile on their face. How have they inspired you? They've inspired me to keep on going no matter what because whenever I have a bad day I just think of them and I just smile. Relying on God is something the Burbanks have done to survive and so have Crawley and Alex's friends to help cope with this loss. The Burbanks have also depended on friends, family, their church, and their community. After a year, the Burbanks are still dealing with their loss. However, they still take time to share old memories like the great last summer they had together. Even though they lost two members of their family and their hearts were broken into that day, Ms. Burbank says no matter what happens, her heart will always be with them. Maggie Roberts, TSC News. Each year, the Halloween industry is getting bigger and bigger, scarier and scarier. A couple of years ago, some of the most common costumes were Power Rangers, Ghosts, and Ninjas. This year, the new Spirit Halloween store has some of the scariest of them all. About how many costumes and decorations are in the store? Uh, I really couldn't give you an exact number. We've got thousands of different costumes. I mean, yeah, you can be everything from uh, an angel to a big furry gorilla. Uh, as far as decorations, uh, we've got pretty much everything you need from outside to indoors. Most popular things probably been pirates. Uh, they're really big this year. Uh, pirates and scary clowns seem to be the two most popular things this year. For Halloween, I'm going to be a spiderweb gauze ghost, and I want to be it because it's scary. I'm going to be a fairy because um, all of my friends say that I should be a fairy, and um, it's like a pink fairy. I don't really know why. 
but my mom chose it. For more information, you can visit www.spirithalloween.com or you can visit the store located at 4690 U.S. Highway 98 North. Maggie Roberts, TSE News. The music starts, flips start flying, and the dancing begins. This is what life is like for two of our very own students, 7th grader Erica Scaff and 6th grader Madison Brown. They dance competitively together on the extreme team at Tammy's Dance Studio. Competitive dancing is hard because you have to make sure that you stretch before you do any kind of dance. I get blisters on my feet a lot, and I have to be up at the dance practicing three nights a week for about three hours. And it's really hard to fit in homework and practicing dances. So Erica, how many dances are you in this year? I'm in four competitive and five recreational. How many times a week do you practice? I dance three days a week for seven hours. And what's the hardest move you've learned? A back handspring. It's kind of a lot of hard work and you have to make sure that you practice or you won't get any good parts in dance. But it's really fun. These dedicated students learn teamwork and how to put their best foot forward. Danielle Gallipo, TSE News.